You hear that? This is the sound of pure and utter disappointment. No, the sound <laughs> is, I know we're about to talk about the Eagles. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome back to the Everyman Guys. I'm Jim. I'm Will. Oh, I'm Jake. Oh, he's got a football. And we are the Everyman Guys. And today we have depressing topics. Well, our first topic is depressing. Everything else is fine. Probably the first day I've regretted being an Everyman Guy because I, I know agree. what that means. It means Dude, we I, have to talk totally about agree. it. I totally agree. I'd rather... Wear this shirt for the rest of my life. Oh yeah, I think you we heard should it like, here first. I think people. we should lead off with why you're wearing that. Yes, like, you want to? You can tell them. Okay, so just watch the last podcast. podcast. I yeah. have to Don't tell them go I'm, in depth. Go so to the last podcast. Gym, watch our short. Go watch our short or our podcast or both. both. No, do Fine. both. You have to watch both, both, and you'll realize why I'm wearing the shirt. I have to wear it for the next five episodes. Show it off a little bit. Maybe just, James just will add a card I'll at show, this spot I'll show it off, to, to reference can that I video. Can I get like a little bit, just like a slight bit of props for keeping my end of the bet? Yeah. And remembering the I was going to say, it I would have forgotten. You know what, uh, you know what <laughs> no, I don't kidding. have to keep up with? I don't have to walk around Northeast in, in uh, shorts. <laughs> Which is exactly what we thought was going to exactly. happen. YouTube shorts. Exactly. Like actual shorts. Actual shorts. Um, our first topic today is... Uh, this season, give them a the list Eagles. of all the topics. Today. Uh, well, th- well, we're starting with a, we're going to go down depressing alley with uh, the Eagles season is over. What's next? And uh, then the Sixers. Uh, <laughs> and then we're going to get like a little bit like hmm hmm with a little bit of a uh, final eight teams in the playoffs. Who's going to do what? Uh, where do we stand on the rest of the Philly teams? That means our Flyers, <laughs> go Flyers, Dude, our go Sixers. Flyers. And in a few short months, our Phillies. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And then we have a segment at the end called What Hurt Most, which, what hurt worse, which if you are a Philly fan, you just know that that means. You're just a customer. You know what we're talking about. All <laughs> yeah. right. Let's, Jake, I want you to start us off with this uh, Eagles topic. I want you to give a season <laughs> review and in this sort of way. So starting off. Uh, and that's all the time we have for yeah. season review. Starting off at the beginning of the season, I think we went nine, ten, ten and one, ten, ten and one. And I, re- I honestly really agreed with the media. I think we were winning, like not on our own. I think we other teams were losing instead of us beating them. We weren't playing good football really at all. We had, I don't know, Hertz was not MVP level in my beliefs. And we could have very easily lost this that through that tough schedule with the Chiefs, Cowboys, Bills, Dolphins. And I don't know. I think it just all came out at the end of the year and into the playoffs with those five, five losses out of the last six. Can I be honest? It doesn't even really feel like it's over right now. I know. Because I know. it felt like it was over, over six, after the yeah. Seahawks game. It, yeah, I know. I, I don't felt like, like the season ended after the Seahawks I game. I have never gone into a, in any sport a Philadelphia playoff game with such little, like, <laughs> desire. And I had a desire to watch the game. Yeah. But it was so far below yep. my yeah. regular desire. Like, it just, just I felt had, like another game. I had never had such low expectations. And then the, and then the team to actually be worse than my worst expectations. Yeah. For me, it doesn't seem like the season's over because I'm not, like, heartbroken ever at all. Because you didn't care. I didn't care. Yeah. Like, right now, Same. I'm just like, yeah. I don't even yeah. care. At the beginning Same. of the year, when we were 6-0, and 7-0, and did I not keep saying, I hate how we keep winning ugly? Yeah. yeah, and everyone's like, "Oh, we keep winning." And I'm like, it's "Yeah, just that's how awesome. they but, win." But it's how they win. I knew that something was up, yeah. but it was we were winning, so it was like it's so hard to complain. And then we lose to the Niners and Cowboys, and that's just like, okay, well, fine, whatever. Yeah. Then we lose to the Seahawks, and, and it's like, all right, one bad loss, whatever again. Then we go out, and we barely beat the Giants on Christmas Day. We get. Like I don't, you can't say smashed by the Cardinals, but you scored thirty-one points and we're up fifteen, and lost to a three-win Cardinals team. You end the season on a terrible note against the Giants again, and then you're going into the playoffs and it's just like, like I told you guys, like I've never gone into an Eagles game 
ever before in my life where I just like, I didn't think that they were going to win, but I didn't think they were going to lose. Like I yeah. just had no idea because their team has not an ounce of an identity. They're coaching, like their offensive coordinator, to me, is calling plays not based on a rhythm of the game, not based on what he likes, not even based on what the head coach is calling him, telling him to call. He's just randomly looking at his play sheet and is like, whatever one he sees or randomly likes, he just throws that into the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. And Jalen Hurts is not on the same on the same page. And I'm not placing all the blame on Brian Johnson because that defense is so poor. Ooh. And the offense is so poor not too. Not pretty. But there's just so much blame. I just have so much blame to push on everyone, including Jalen Hurts, including A.J. Brown, the whole coaching staff. But the majority of my blame goes to the defense I because honestly, they had absolutely no effort. Well, oh, I guess that's a. I, I was thinking about it. Like, think about their main weaknesses, especially last night. All right. Um, they ran the ball 15 times for a total of 42 yards. On a night when they had to run the ball. Yeah. They yeah. they got away from the running game so fast. They ran it twice with DeAndre Swift in the first half, and then that was it. And yeah. then they expected to go back to him later. That's coaching. Um, I don't think James Bradbury and Kevin Byard and the defensive line and ones need to be taught how to tackle, but it's also coaching and not practicing the way they miss tackles. That is unacceptable, I've, and that is le- that is that usually happens when a coaching staff lets it slip. Yeah. So yeah, I that, have two a thought on that because everyone's been getting on the Eagles the last few years for like training camp, but having this l- the least amount of practice, and then yeah. through the year barely have any practice. But we went to the Super Bowl, so it's like apparently that was fine. We but had then this year. I think the problem is that the players just. Like the Nick Sirianni's message or Matt Patricia's message or whoever's message is just going in one ear and out the other, and they're not. Like, I, I don't really think hilarious. it's the length of their practice or what they're doing. It's just that there's no effort. I give zero uh, percent blame on Matt Patricia. Zero. But, like, what is he supposed to do? Sean okay. Desai destroyed this defense, and then you bring him in in week twelve. You knew the defense was terrible. I differ because I. Because I don't like Matt, Matt Patricia. Patricia is I don't like atrocious. Matt Patricia. But you you knew what you had going in, and then you switch them halfway through the season. When it will you explain yeah, anyone? I, I feel like that situation would whoever work. made if the anything, coaching change. I think if anything, they should have switched to offensive coordinator. Because Sean yeah, that Desai, was surprising. Sean Desai, in my opinion, it was when Sean Desai was in there. It was more. It was the better. Yeah. It was yeah. better. Defense, it was definitely but I better. I thought it was more on the players there. than the coordinator. Yeah. Because it's hard to really tell when like a coordinator is. Say making a defensive coordinator is making the wrong call. You know what I'm saying? They, From, they might not blitz enough, but like, okay, yeah, that is annoying, and they don't blitz yeah. enough. But they're horrible at blitzing. And I just don't just understand how. I don't understand how it can be so obvious to everyone, like Fans, outside of the Eagles, um, outside of the Eagles coaching staffs. I don't understand how it can be so obvious to us. It's like, okay, why are you calling a screen pass? On third and eight plus, and but yet they'll do it every single time. Or why aren't you running the ball here? Or do your deep bomb? How about not on fourth and two? Right. Like I don't understand how it's so obvious to us fans and players and everyone on social media, broadcasters, yeah. the media. But yet it's like there was literally no adjustment made it's- from the Cardinals game. To the Buccaneers game, it was. There's no adjustment the made off season. It was. All, I know, Nick but Sirianni, all season, it was like you can make the argument that like, okay, it's not pretty, but they're winning. What reason do we have to change it? Like, I you can make that argument, whether it's fair or not. I feel like you can, but Shannon, I mean, once you start losing by that, like that brutally, mm-hmm. there has to be something. Okay. But yet, it's not obvious to them. They asked Nick Sirianni about making changes, and he said. If I had the answer, then uh, we would have made the changes. Yeah, you, th- that is a fireable offense. Yeah, it's ego to say no, but like you went, you had nineteen weeks to find an answer as an NFL head coach, and you couldn't find an answer. Yeah. Apparently, you are not you're not fit for a job. When people were standing outside your building with signs saying exactly what you needed to do more, and also, like uh, Shannon Sharp says it, never accept something in a win that you wouldn't in a loss. 
So like the things that were unacceptable uh, like when they were winning ugly yeah. should not have just been like, oh, well, we're winning because they're going to come up. They're going to happen when they yeah. were struggling tackling in week four. You should have addressed it in week four when they're struggling to tackle in against the Niners. You should have addressed it yeah. when the offense was not at all operating the way it should be back since the beginning of the season. You should have addressed it. Well, to Will's and it point, wasn't addressed. To Will's point on like being so predictable, when you have Christian McCaffrey on exactly. t- live TV during a game predicting what play you're going to do, yeah. that should b- say something. When you have broadcasters broadcasting the game and they are getting annoyed, at, like you can tell that last night Troy Aikman was annoyed. He said, yeah. "What are they doing with all these screen passes?" Yeah. When you have fans just lashing out for weeks upon weeks. About this terrible play calling, like, no, you don't have to. You don't have to just follow the fans' commands or whatever you want to say. But like, doesn't that like shed a light that something is wrong? That's what exactly. I mean. Like, there's no way the coaching staff isn't hearing all of that. No, like, yeah. there's he, no he comments way. Comments on it. He there's comments no on way it. they're not hearing that. So I, that like, if I could ask Sirianni any question, like, I think that would be my question. Like, yeah. like, so you hear all the noise, obviously. Like, is that affecting you in any way based on, oh, maybe I should adjust something here? Like, I would love to. I'm very yeah. curious you know, to hear his yeah. answer um, on that. One last thing yeah. I want to say on Jalen Hurts yeah, is – just on you. Sorry. One I last thing it. I want to say on Jalen Hurts is, like, they asked him what his thoughts were on uh, the idea of Nick Sirianni losing his job. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I didn't know about that. Wait, he's he's gone or whatever he said. Yeah, like all like, sarcastic. First of all, I hate to give props to Dak Prescott when they brought that up about Mike McCarthy. He went on a rant about like how he was in total support and said if they're gonna fire Mike McCarthy, then send him too because it was Dak's fault also. Yeah. And then Jalen Hurts says something like Who that. Who played really well? And it's like the players. Decent anyway. The players when your coach is in a situation like that and you're in a playoff game. Wouldn't you at least try to step up for your coach and save his exactly. job? Exactly. There's no there's Jeez. no uh chemistry no. at all between anyone. I think that something And that's I think, coaching. I think yeah. something halfway through the re- halfway through yeah. the year happened H- in the had locker room. to have. Yeah. In that <laughs> locker room something happened and I'm just waiting for it to come out. It yeah. had to have because, because like Sirianni had those players wrapped around his finger. Yeah. Yeah. Up until yeah. that point, yep. some, I completely agree. Something, something, something had to have happened. I think it was Brian Johnson. I think I think AJ Brown complaining on the sideline wasn't just AJ Brown complaining on the sideline. But then Dallas Goddard was complaining on the sideline. He last said he night wasn't too. though. He said he was he was taking he was uh, talking about one of the plays that he messed up, and he was he said he was just talking. Yeah, but uh, it's just some happened, and then I agree because there's no way, there's well, no possible way, even if you're winning ugly, that you're ten and one and go, and it's just automatically report, it's one and six and you're out in the first round. A report playoffs. came out saying that there was a rift between the way Hurts. Brian Johnson and Sirianni saw. That's that exactly was, what I would that think. That was yesterday morning before the game. A report came out saying that there was they had sources inside saying that there was a legitimate rift between what they saw as being what they wanted the offense to look like. If players aren't agreeing with coaches, they're kind of. I mean, for the most part, it'd be very reasonable to to believe mm-hmm. that these players are almost playing out of spite because it's like, well, this isn't what I think is going to work, but my coach is saying it is, but it clearly isn't to me. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would and not I don't even it. know who that falls on because, like, when they bring up the whole Slay, Matt, Patricia thing, that they have something between mm-hmm. you, and it's like, all right, well, Slay, you need to just grow up, like, yeah. or whatever. Or I, I don't know the whole situation. But then, like, when it comes to Hurts and Brian Johnson it's like and Sirianni, it's like, okay, there's a rift. You're ten and one. Like this is your chance. Why is there no? Whatever you have to do, whatever you have to do. Why is there no compromise or getting together or one person switching? Like yeah. you gotta fix that. I you mean, can't just go down one and six and first and then go one and out. In the also, playoffs. like, why is that report coming out the day like the day of the game? Like, I know there, it's, it's been good. That that's very that, fair. That what that report has been going on for the last. Seven well, they were weeks. probably just reporting on the regular season. Then it's like, oh, they're playing a playoff game. Let's really, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's or it got bigger right then, and that's yeah. even worse. Look yeah. at honestly, look at 
like the situation that the Ravens have had with Lamar Jackson and like Harbaugh, the people saying, oh, the d- offense is built around Lamar Jackson. It's it is built around Lamar. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, 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 so so why would you not listen to your exactly c- uh, quarterback that you just paid and say, hey, he's not comfortable in this situation in this yeah. system. We need to look at changing it. My it seems like they're not oh, like I don't know, but there has to be something going between. My thing yes. that I do not I do not believe this is happening. But when Carson Wentz went through his thing, it became that like. He was above everyone in the locker room. Yeah. And then it just spiraled from there. I really hope that, like, say the way Jalen Hurts answered that question, that he's not becoming too high in the locker room and then it'll spiral Jay- down. Jalen Hurts is like, this is how I view Jalen Hurts. It's the same way I view Bryce Harper, the same way I view Nick Sirianni, the same way I view Travis Konechny, John Tortorella. I like your shtick if it's working. John Tura, I love listening to his press conferences. Do you know why? Because he's wor- it's working. Their team's playing out of their mind. Bryce Harper, I love his attitude yeah. because you know why? He plays out of his mind. And when Hurts is playing out of his mind, if he wants to be the silent reaper, cool, love it. You want Nick Sirianni? You want to be on the sideline? You want to be yelling at Chiefs fans? Cool, love it. We're winning. Yeah. When we're losing and you want to play the, like you want to do the same thing, well, it doesn't work now because we're not impressed. The last thing I felt like hearing last night or any was, of these past seven weeks was Jalen Hurts bring up something about weathering the, the storm. Yeah, or the bring waves a in the umbrella ocean then. doing this. And that. It's I apologize. Like, dude, like you got to show some fire, some passion. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Not these little cliches anymore. They're, they're, they're ridiculous. They're not working. I, I don't even understand why. They're, Go ahead. There is a bright side to all of this. Um, I don't know, like, if you like, if you're trying to find the silver lining, is that um, the Packers beat the Cowboys? Oh, yeah, forty-eight See, to thirty-two. I, it does like the way that the Eagles went out. I I don't even. It's care. more embarrassing uh, than the Cowboys. I I, it is I more said that up until the, the first drive of last night's game, and I was the like, ca- yep, the Packers, I'd much rather have an Eagles win than yeah. a the Packers. Ball. Just flat out destroyed the Cowboys because the Packers yeah. were a better but team. To, but to the, Jake's we point, we lost to the Buccaneers. Yeah. We gave up what was it? 30? 32. 32. Yeah, because they scored like right at the end of to the, the game. Buccaneers, who scored nine points against the Panthers. But to Jake's game. point, though, like it doesn't does it really hurt? Like I feel like we kind of lost the season like six games ago. Yeah. I, I, to I, me, I, it's still it's just it's I'm almost it's disappointing, but like. I'm almost more. I'm already looking for the silver lining before that game. I was looking toward it. Less hurts, more just ticks me off. Oh yeah, like just yeah. You know what it felt like? It felt like last year after uh, the fans started boycotting and booing the Flyers. It felt like the then and um, it was right before um, what's his name got fired, Chuck Fletcher, and it was like that. (sighs) All right, I feel like this is rock bottom. And we're going to come – you know what I mean? I feel like this is the yeah. worst spot we can be in, and the only place they can go from is here because they're going to make changes, and they did. And I feel like that's what's going to happen. I don't know if Sirianni is going to be here next year. If the offensive coordinator – No, I wouldn't be I will be. I will be okay if he is. Same. If I the offensive coordinator Same. and defensive coordinator and defensive Got it, analyst – I don't know what Matt Patricia technically is or Sean Desai is. They have to be gone. And Harry Roseman – if um, we do not, if we do has, not yeah. get a linebacker in this draft or through free agency that will be able to run, be able to just make a reasonable tackle, like I, I don't know, we won't be, this we is, will not be a Super Bowl contender. This is because the f- teams will just throw all over the middle, all over us. Again. This is probably the first time since we were running Nelson Aguilar and those that squad out in receiver. Mm-hmm. This is probably the first time since then that it was so unbelievably obvious. Who we should take in a draft? Mm-hmm. Like to me, it is just I, yeah. absolutely obvious. I we think need linebackers. Our, our draft this year should be strictly defense. Yes, our you offense, do not need anything our on offense, offense. Is super talented. All they need is chemistry and an offensive coordinator. So, mm-hmm. and the thing is, we're probably going to lose DeAndre Swift, but we can bring in a serviceable running back at a low cost. I am not and concerned about a running back really. This ever. offensive line that should that. Really stunk to their standards this year. Behind this offensive line, if they get back to their standards, a serviceable running back will become a good running back. 
Jeff. A few things I took is we need to change our coordinators. Devontae Smith doesn't take any of the blame because last night he was the only one that looked Yeah, I was going to say. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Matt He's the Patricia, only consistent. Not his fault, but what is he doing with uh, Hassan Reddick? <laughs> Nolan coverage. Smith and Hassan Reddick in coverage. And then finally. Yeah. Your two best uh, pass rushers. <laughs> thank you to Jason Kelsey for. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Let's hear for Less, Jason Kelsey. Kelsey. I know. I was Actually, just going to so so bring him up. He. Jason Kelsey is, Jason if, Kelsey, if you, like, if you real. looked, if there was a thing in the dictionary of what a Philly sports athlete is like, mm-hmm. even more than Bryce Harper, I believe, you put, mm-hmm. Jason Kelsey is right there. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And the way that that team let him down for his last game is an embarrassment. Yeah. Like seeing him cry on the sidelines after that game, even if it was, like, if it was the conference championship and they got and they lost, that's something. Yeah. yeah. But going on a one and six and then losing in the playoffs to the Buccaneers. To have one of the worst best. seasons, it's one of the worst downfalls in NFL history. Yeah, it is. The last team to go 10 and one and not win their division was the Jets in 1998. Only two teams, the Patriots and the Steelers. Steelers did it just recently, right? Were ten and one and, lo- no, and didn't make it to the divisional round. Yeah, but they they were they didn't win their division and then were one and done. Yeah. And then that was the Jets won their first playoff game. One. Yeah, that's what I mean. They didn't. Another yeah. thing that makes round. it so bad, like yeah, Baker Mayfield might be having a good year this year, but he's on his fourth team. You got to yeah. realize, like he's not an elite quarterback. Yeah. And you're losing to Baker Mayfield. Also, the Buccaneers didn't even play a good game. Exactly. No. I know. They're going to get the score is so it's it's not they, really how the game. They're going to get no, destroyed. They should, by the time it should have been because, fifty. Like, they should have scored fifty. No, but I'm saying to Ian's day, point. Yeah. What? But to Ian's point though, it, it's it's true. I um, think the score is deceiving of as to how bad the Buccaneers play. I think it was, yeah. no. I think it's more deceiving of like how actually bad the Eagles are. Yeah, like they could have been in that game like easily. Yeah, yeah. The and Buccaneers, they were in the game. I, I heard this thing because I the Bucks were playing so bad. I heard this thing that the Bucks only had like 174 total yards the week before, or something like that, yeah. or something like that. And they out, and Baker Mayfield outpassed that in like the first half or the yeah, first yeah. quarter. We're t- we were Baker, like, it was the it was, thing was it's just an atrocity. Their last game, they beat the Buck, uh, the Panthers, the worst team in the league, nine nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't think they scored a single touchdown. Yeah, it's just embarrassing to lose to that team with Jason Kelsey's last last yeah, year I feel ending for that Jason way. Kelsey so that much. sucked. But the thing with him, uh, it would feel worse if they hadn't won the Super Bowl with him. Yeah, and they were just. But he's just like the. You couldn't ask for a better yeah. like I athlete. Really There's athlete. no way to yeah. not love him. Yeah. yeah, I'd I'd honestly be fine if they brought him in as a coach, as an offensive <laughs> yeah. coordinator. He couldn't be worse. Right than now, that. it's just like it's like Kelsey, Harper, and Embiid. I don't even think you can really. Include I cannot it. wait to speak on Embiid. Hurts. I cannot wait. in that, but. Uh, well, <sighs> that speaking was good of, to the get Eagles, it out of the Eagles, I know. <laughs> let's, let's let's move on. I'm yes. so relieved. Let's move on, James. <laughs> I'm not, but I just I'm glad that we are. The <laughs> Packers are in the next round of the playoffs because they beat the Cowboys. Let's not lose sight of that. So, and the Lions are in the second round of the playoffs, which good, huh? The Texans with CJ Stroud. Oh my gosh, are dude. you serious? I mean. CJ like, Stroud again. I'll say it again. He's an absolute baller, but it's just the, it's just in the I back of my head that he's from Ohio State. <laughs> I so it's just like I, I, I hate it okay. so yeah. much. I can't root for him. Um, what are our matchups, Will? Well, before before that, um, the Packers Cowboys. Oh my god, that was so the, so we talked about a little bit ever. last night, but you guys obviously yeah. saw like yeah. Jordan Love is literally literally Aaron Rodgers. I know with. Uh, He's a clown. Everyone calm down. Yeah. I mean his throwing form. Yeah. Dude, and he was just absolutely played out of his mind. And I'm excited. Uh, like, I like when it's not a direct rival. If it's anyone other than Dallas, mm-hmm. I know. I'm excited when there's like new talent that's kind of starts low. Yeah. Like CJ Stroud, you kind of expect yeah. him to be really good. But like Jordan Love, like How this year, QBs like just coming drafted? out like that. Get stuck behind a QB, never get a chance, and just like, wiped off the map. But yeah. also, like, yeah. like then, Jordan Love just like taking his you time. You know that he took the, the time. process. You know that he took the time 
He learned from Aaron Rodgers every single second that he oh got. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, and you can tell. Absolutely. Like, he had one year, this year, to prove that he was a QB. Mm-hmm. Or he was going to be shipped out and they were going to get another yes, one. Yes, and they were going to find he, someone he, else. And he just balled out. And, like, you can tell that he learned from Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Because he um, he throws exactly like him. He He's going up. He went up to the line during the Cowboys game, pointed out a linebacker and said, he's blitzing. Mm-hmm. Like, when was the last time we even saw Jalen Hurts do something I know. like that? I want to say something. He's just a beast, and that was so fun to watch. How fun the Packers just draft a, a Hall of Fame quarterback, and then, oh, this guy <laughs> comes off the bench. It went Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, and Jordan Love. But, Who's like, dude, next? like, yeah, for real. Like, Jordan Love was so impressive, and I think, I mean, I think I'm rooting for the Packers now. Me like too. like that's my team to to root I, for. I, I have, have, I have a, it's ho- a like, hard yes, thing. Yes, the Texans absolutely. I want the Packers but, Texans Super Bowl. But again, my my reasoning is is that Jordan Love, who like, let's face it, he he had to wait yeah. because there's he did, no way was he getting a chance. He didn't want to go to another team because he could start. Mm. He trusted the process all the way through, and now he's crushing it. You didn't hear and, a word of complaint from him. Yes. Yeah. He, he is crushing it. He's such a likable player. Yeah. And uh, they said I'm, that. I'm they going, said the locker room is just I'm going, yeah. what I'm I, going Packers. What I will Packers say, though. Packers are 8-0 and L in, in Dallas. Love. That that beautiful. That's the best thing ever. It's I, awesome. My favorite player outside is Aaron Jones. Outside of the, he's, Aaron Jones, he's, he's in four games, I think it was, or five games against Dallas. He has he nine touchdowns. Dallas. Yeah. Nine. Honestly, like, I know I love the Packers right now. Um, the thing that hurts me, I do not like C.J. Gardner Johnson. I uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's but, why you can't root for the Lions? But I love oh, Dan Campbell. Oh, because you know you're going to hear about it. I, I love Dan, love Dan and Campbell. And another yes. QB story that I love is the whole Jared, Jared Goff, Goff, Goff. Yeah. It's really, it's just really cool. Also, I would just like to point out, Matt Stafford played his brains out yeah. that game. That was an amazing game. Yeah, One Stafford. of the best games in a while. Yeah, exactly. And I know the, the Patrick Mahomes no look pass is is the Matt Stafford and Aaron Rodgers. I was gonna no say that's pass. the Aaron Rodgers no look yes. pass. Dude, um, and even more impressive, I was able to stay up for that whole game. Really? Yeah. Nice. Can we clap yeah, for me? Good job. I didn't even I fall almost, asleep I once. I almost did. Dude. I, <laughs> and, and it was just oh my gosh, it was such that a good game. Crowd at Detroit Dude, that was I loud. Know. Yeah. Play and lose yourself <laughs> with uh, Eminem being there. That's I'm I'm a I'm I'm going Lions because Dan Campbell, like, dude, Dan I love Dan Campbell. Dan I mean, how do you not? I know. If we had Dan Campbell in the Eagle with the Eagles, how they're playing right now, I think every single person would be out of the building in five yeah. seconds. Honestly, but, that's kind of why I want Vrabel. Yeah, but yeah. I want but, Pablo. <laughs> but Sirianni has like the same energy. He does when they're winning. Um, listen, listen, Sirianni, Sirianni has, has, a, has the same energy because he it comes across to me that like. He's got a star here, so he's really cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like the yeah. psychic. So like he'll never say something against that star player. Yeah. To where Dan Campbell almost comes across it like, like the Tortorella he's, he's style. The top yeah. dog. Like, I, would, yeah. I would say Sirianni likes to throw it in your face and like be the you know, bombastic. I think Dan Campbell wants to kill you. Yeah. Like honestly, like yeah. I think he I think he would rather see you dead than have his team lose. He said he wanted a real line on his practice field. Yeah. And he wanted it to use you the don't, like, like honestly, like I look at Sirianni and I see a bit of a character. When I look at Dan Campbell, I'm like I would be scared of him if I was, <laughs> I know. you know what I mean? Like, but he I would be won. like, he would be like a great dad, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like yeah. a great dad. Like, like Sirianni, one of Sirianni's most famous press conferences, him talking about flowers. Dan yeah. Campbell's is about biting people's <laughs> kneecaps off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All um, right. So, and his so voice the, goes perfect with the Packers. Him. Yeah. For some reason, I've always had this like little thing that like, whenever the Eagles are out. For some reason, I like rooting for the Packers. Yeah. Because of Devontae Adams. Same. I, I like Aaron Rodgers. And yeah. then, like, something about the Packers, I always did. Yeah, because so they always do Dallas. Dallas to get, <laughs> yeah. But to then, see Jordan Love, so that I want the Packers in the Super Bowl so bad. But it would just help because I want the Niners out. I want the Niners out so fast. And then, if the Lions beat the Packers, so what? Yeah. But I want the Packers, and then in the AFC, I want the Ravens. I don't. Jake, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I don't see a way that. The, the, the seeing the Buccaneers, I don't think they're playing. They're beating the uh, the Lions. I don't think they're. I I I, I could be wrong. I don't think Let's the Pack help. go. 
Um, I think, honestly, I think if there's a team that is well-balanced that could go against the 49ers, it's the Lions. I think they're a better team than the Packers. The only difference is I like Jordan Love more than I like Jared Goff. Like, I trust, I feel like Jordan Love's better. Yeah, like Jared Goff had that one play where he's about to get sacked. He just threw it with two hands. Yeah. I'm like, like nothing yeah. is more Jared Goff, and I hate it yeah. because uh-huh. it's like, I want to pull for him, but like he does so much stupid yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, but I have one question regarding that Packers and Cowboys game. How, what happened to where on the third play of the game, Dak and CD are already upset yeah. with each other? Because did you see the third like, and eight? Was there a pregame or something? Did you see the third and eight? He threw the ball over CD's head. I know, but Honestly, then like third and eight, and they, I don't know if there must have been miscommunication. I know, or, but like there's no way they're just like that upset and then it just drives through the whole game. Because the, the whole game they were chirping yeah. each other. And it, was all, it started on the third play. I'm like, what happened? I, I must have missed it. I could very easily see the Packers beating the 49ers. Like, just because the Packers' mentality is throwing haymakers, like they said with the Cowboys. Like, it, yeah. They don't ha- they're not expected to win, so why not just go out and give it your absolute all? The I only agree. thing so, that I have giving the Packers is that they have nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. The, but, the, the, honestly, the, um, the line that f- sums up the, the Cowboys the best with any team they play is there's a line in a show called Succession where he says, you are not serious people. And that's kind of just the Cowboys. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're not serious. I don't think serious. the 49ers it's pull, unbelievable. I think the 49ers defense is, will uh, show up uh, yeah. way more than the I Cowboys defense. Sanford. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't absolutely or shock that me. surprised at if... I would be pretty pre- I would be surprised. Precise. So Jake, who are you precise. rooting for from now on? Um, so, so for the 49ers game, I'm obviously rooting for the Packers, but who do you want to go all the way? I want a Lions Texans Super Bowl with the Texans winning. <laughs> that would be jumping amazing. on the Texans bandwagon and it's like I would love to, but th- I just can't. Like the CJ th- Stroud, I, I, I don't. I, I jumped on that Texans bandwagon right away. <laughs> Does anyone else? Think I like Ravens Lions. I like Ravens Packers. And Ravens I winning. like Packers. Oh wait, no, 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 no! I like Bills Lions. Bills Lions. <laughs> Bills Lions. Dang it! I was hoping you didn't. Can we yeah. talk about the fact? Bills and Chiefs are B- playing Bills again. Bills and Chiefs, and, <laughs> and Patrick Mahomes has to travel for the first time. To, uh, in, a, in a game outside and guess of the Super Bowl. I'm so and guess what? Because the, the Bills, Bills are going and guess what? to destroy the Chiefs. No, the Chiefs are going to win. No. All I, I want to be out there before we get. Listen, before this all starts, because we know if the Chiefs lose, then it's going to become Josh Allen is on a different level than Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> no. There's a reason why Patrick Mahomes has been in the championship game. Almost every single year of his career. Correct. But like, the conversation has to be that Josh Allen is better than people give him credit for. Yes. This year. I yes. will give him credit. I, overall. Any year, any but year. listen. listen because overall. last listen, year was his you only know bad that, like, year. As soon as the Bills beat the Chiefs, if because I think they might. Yeah. That it's going to be like, oh, well, Mahomes only got there because he was at home. No, it's like the, no. Mahomes all, is the best quarterback the her, in the league. The home field advantage, Un- and second of all, like it's just one, it's yeah. one road. Mahomes is the best team, best quarterback, and Burrow is probably the second best quarterback. I, Allen, is I disagree. Right up there, I say Allen's second. Really? Really? Better would, than but, Burrow? Yes. I think Burrow. Oh, you think I he's think better Burrow. than Burrow? I mean. Wh- like it, it's a very what close is, third, but Burrow I think Burrow is. Okay. I think better. Okay. Burrow's better. Okay. Than I think it's, you use this on them. <laughs> if you're starting a team, who are you taking, Barrow or Allen? Barrow. 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 I'm taking Josh Allen. Well, outside of injuries, because uh, yeah. Barrow has been very injured. Um, yeah. Just what, I, think, I, like, I think it's like Mahomes, it, it's honestly Burrow, the same. and then Allen and Jackson. Honestly, it's the same discussion we All have right. about Tua and Allen. I think Barrow's just a better to quarterback. To be honest with you, if I'm starting a team, Justin Herbert is my third option or second. I'm taking him over Josh Allen. Uh, I, I want to see like Justin, starting another I Josh see, Allen. Hate. I want to see Justin, Justin Herbert, Herbert with a good coach. Yeah. Fair and right, then so, I'll decide. So Chiefs, Bills, Jim, official prediction. Bills. Bills. Um, um, oh my gosh, this is going to be another shootout. A thousand to a thousand and five. <laughs> yes. 40, <laughs> 40, 42, my, 35 Bills. I have my picks already submitted, and I put Bills over Chiefs 31 28. Oh. 31 28, what'd you say? Uh, 42 35. Bills 37-31 with eight touchdowns in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm saying Chiefs win 
I, I cannot wait for this game. The, it's like my, the perfect what, time. Re- one of it's the best, one game. Of the best games I, I don't, watch. I don't know what my reason is to not pick yeah. the Chiefs. I hear you. Jeff, what do you got? Uh, Patrick Mahomes is still Josh All right, what's the score? Big brother. So it's probably going to be Chiefs aren't scoring a lot of touchdowns. I don't think it's probably going to be like 31 to 24. Uh, so geez. this is the first Jeez. time that we've done a prediction that it was three on one, I believe. Yeah. Or three, three no, well, I was Michigan, the only one. Washington and the Michigan. I was the only one who picked the Bucks no. to beat the Eagles. Oh Out of really? All yeah. Of this. Oh yeah. True. I remember, yeah. Jim saved us on the Michigan one. Yeah. I remember that. Oh, yeah, but other, I took the yeah, bullet. Too. Most of them are two two. Yeah. All, all right, one. Packers Niners. Niners. I'm not gonna give a score for this. You have to. You it's have gonna to. take forever. No, just just, just think all right. Niners, Packers. I am gonna go Niners, thirty-five. Packers, twenty. Are you serious? Yeah. I was going thirty-five, <laughs> twenty-one. All right. uh, Niners. Go. Packers, thirty-five, thirty-four. Packers, <gasps> twenty-eight, twenty-seven. Bro, one point win. <laughs> Niners, yeah. thirty-five. Packers, twenty-one. I believe. So so who's so me and Jake are going Packers? Yeah. yeah. And you two yeah. are going Niners. Niners. Yeah. Niners. We're superstition. You two pick the Packers over the Cowboys. I'm yeah, I was just going to say. I'll pick a 49ers. Okay, oh boy. that's good. All right, so we got to keep that rolling. Dude, uh, if someone gets a score and the team right, we'll, yeah. we'll come up with a giant prize. Texans, Ravens. Jim, you go because this is your squad. Oh, this is the hardest to pick. I, I know. Listen, C- I, CJ Stroud has looked so Dude, good. Dude, all of these games are going to be but so I high know. scoring. Listen, CJ Stroud has no. looked so good. The Bills he and has. Chiefs could end the up. The Ravens defense. The Ravens is defense. Dominant. They just beat the Dolphins 56 to something yeah. last time they played. Yeah, but two is no Stroud. <laughs> I love how two is falling so far down why, the map. I don't know now. what's going on with me, but it's another one point win. It's 28-27 Ravens. I think this is where it ends. For That's what I just said for think, the Packers Niners, right? I think, Niners, I think right? it's 35-14 Ravens. So listen, really? I think so it's listen, a blowout. I, I hate I'm to sorry. say it. God, I sorry. hate to say it because I'm pulling for the Ravens and I have been. No. Are you going? You're going Texans? <laughs> Are you but an I, Ohio State fan? <laughs> no, but I think <laughs> that, that because of the Ohio underdog, State? the Cinderella story, I think – and with uh, Lamar Jackson, like the Ravens struggles. The, yeah, in the playoffs. I think the Texans come out and shock them, and it might be like 31-21 Texans. Ooh. Like it's a two, two, double Jake, digit. what did you say? 28-27? Ravens. Ravens. Yeah. I think uh, – I want to pick the Texans so bad, but like – This is not I what don't I know. want. This I is think, just what I have I think I think it's going to be 21 21- 14 Ravens. Oh, I just can't see it being no that field I think I think that the the Ravens have had their struggles offensively in the playoffs and I think their defense has never been as good as it is now. Yeah. So I think that their defense holds on and their and their offense gets it together. Because Lamar Jackson, he won the MVP 2 years ago. I think he's way better now. Yeah, yeah. Than even in that MVP season. Yeah. Pretty sure it was last. All right, uh, and then we get to our prediction. I said that the Ravens ain't winning a single game. Yeah, so sticking with it. Tex- yeah, the Texans are winning. Mm. They probably win twenty eight, twenty four. So now we get to our boring game of the week. <laughs> we go to Lions Buccaneers, <laughs> where the colorway is boring and the quarterbacks are white, and the rest of the game is boring. <laughs> I'm <That's> probably <laughs> going. <laughs> Lions. What's the most boring score? Twenty seven seventeen. Oh, that's, that's a definitely good score. gonna be that's right. The right score. <laughs> I know. I feel like that. Is there another score? I'll you want me to give like another? Should I keep going? <laughs> I'll go Lions twenty. You want me to predict um um uh, golf yardage? Thirteen. Twenty eight thirteen. All right. All right, all right I'm thirty one. Thirty one fourteen Lions. Yeah, I would 20, not be surprised. 28 10 Lions. Jeff, can you do us a favor and pick the Bucks? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's no way they, the Lions don't win. And there is a way. Uh, there's there's definitely so, a way. Um, dude, this is going to be awesome. Is because, that the last one? Yeah. So so the Bucks Lions play at three. 
The Texans Ravens play at four thirty. Is that a Sunday? Yep. No, Saturday. Or sorry, sorry. The Texans Ravens is on Saturday, and so is the Niners and Packers. Um, They're both on Saturday. Yep. Yeah. And the Bucks Lions is at three on Sunday, and the Chiefs Bills is at six thirty on Sunday. That's a great. Which is, that is oh, amazing. Every Sunday night game yes. should be at that time. I, I know. Agree. Would you complain? No. Would you no. complain? Would you complain? No, uh, not no. the Chiefs. I know complain? you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Do you want to watch together? I would love it. Yes. Shake on it. Yes. Are we watching together? Yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna come to our house? Well, I Probably. would say spring gnome. So, like, yeah. obviously, if it's yeah, spring, spring. Yeah. All, get, yeah. All right. It's a, it's a deal. Um, cool. that's that's official predictions. And then we said so of that of those teams. I guess so. I said the Ravens were gonna win and the Lions were gonna win, and I said the Packers and the Chiefs. But they're playing the Texans. So and then, the who? So the Packers and Chiefs would play, or the sorry, no, Packers the Packers and Lions. and Lions would play. Division Dude, that would be so, then, so then, I'm saying, I'm saying it's gonna be, I'm saying it's gonna be Packers, Ravens in the Super Bowl, okay, because well the Ravens would, are gonna beat the Chiefs. So then, according to mine, it would be Texans, Bills, Texans, and Bills. I say Bills win. And I say, I said. Niners, I say, the best is I say Niners Bills. The ah. best is we're going to come in here the complete opposite Listen, next, next week. Next week of we're going to have <laughs> new yeah. predictions anyway. We might as well just move on. I then. think uh, we move on. I'm excited, man. I'm, dude, this week, I, I cannot. Don't have to worry I about the even, Eagles. I can't even express. My, my favorite Listen. football game of all time. Honestly, outside of Eagles games, is that Chiefs uh, Bills game a few years yeah. ago? I was. It was on, arguably the best game. I was the thirteen second game. Yes, oh, I was no. on the edge of my seat the entire. Um, me and Noam were building a puzzle, so <laughs> there wasn't much intensity going <laughs> on. No. But no. legitimately, I was like, "Oh my gosh! Wait, no! Oh my gosh! Wait, no! Oh my gosh!" <laughs> I know, dude. Oh, it was ridiculous. Honestly, though, oh. like, when was the last time that like the Eagles got knocked out of the playoffs, and then it was just like. Just just big game after big game. I know. We talked about like the last few months have just been big games. Every single one of these games I will watch. I know. Like Same. start to finish. The only, oh, yeah. the only bad one I think is Buccaneers and Lions, and that's just because Lions. we don't really have any rooting in it. And I, yeah. I will honestly like well, to watch I, that because I like the Lions story. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I like the Lions. Um oh, we sense. move on to where do we stand on the rest of our Philly teams? Um I'm a little bit like warm right now, so I'm just gonna let one of us go first. Um, yeah, one of you guys. Can, I, can I, I start? He, you start with the Sixers. Okay. Because because I haven't Embiid, watched the I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a sum. I'll sum it up. Joel Embiid just tied. I've heard. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Wilt Chamberlain as the only three players with 16 plus games of over 30, 10, 5 or something like that. He just scored on MLK Day yesterday. 41. And then I forget the rest, but he scored 41 points, double digit rebounds, and then so many assists. And I looked at it, and I was just like, okay, that's normal. And then I and then I like thought to myself, like, like what the heck? Like, why is that normal? We have a player in Philadelphia who's just scoring 40 points on a normal basis, and it's like, we just don't care. Who's the best player so in Philly sports like, right he's, now? He's he's the MVP right now, and it's not in in my opinion, it's not even close. Yeah. He's going to win the scoring title again. I, he's a I, center. Listen, and he's about to win the scoring title listen, for the third straight year. The Eagles are done. I do not care. I'm not I'm not upset about it. I'm, I'm over it. I'm going all in on the Sixers and Flyers the rest of the the rest of this season. So I'm excited to get on board, but yeah, I mean I've I've obviously see the stats every once in a while yeah. and it's just so like So normally I watch It does seem normal. I normally watch most of the Sixers games. And then I'll just like whenever I watch the Flyers, I'll watch Flyers. This year I've been watching the Flyers a ton, and Sixers are just like falling under the bus for me. I'm not really following them, but I'll always like I always get updates for the Sixers, so I see him beat stats, and it's just like, dude, like he is the most dominant player in the NBA, and it's just it's not even close. Yeah, like it used to be that like he was there's the a tight MVP in race Jokic and Giannis, and now it's just like he's unguarded. I'm yeah, still to be little, honest, still a little warm. <laughs> doing a double layer. He, he, I he's think what he's doing right now skin. is he got a Flyers jersey, he got a Flyers hat, now he has a Bobby Brink jersey shirt on. The, you on don't the, have Bobby Brink. Turn around. 
That's definitely Chum. not Bobby Brink. Oh, no, oh, Jake, it, it actually is. All those Bobby Brinkness. Don't forget his flyers. He's going to um, get warm, and he has a huge flyers <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> can you put it on he's, Ash he's, on Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's going to get a huge <laughs> flyers oh, tattoo so on his chest. <laughs> this is like one of the first times in, since our desk that I've been in actually just a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he's um, like the, so, uh, wait, from the Fansville commercial, and he yeah. Jim, I have a question. Yeah. Um... So now it's your turn. Uh, who do you want to talk about? <laughs> the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um, where do I? St- the Eagles hurt my soul, um, and I know that it's probably going to happen that the Flyers are going to trade away a lot of pieces of the deadline. And but that's expected. And that's expected. What I just want to say is that what a freaking success this season has been already, just in getting me back into being like, let's go Flyers. Let's go Flyers. Let's go. Oh my god! Well, you know Let's funny? go orange and black. Remember Dude. at the beginning of the season, I said under over they orange. win thirty games, uh-huh. and it was a legitimate question. I know. And now they're on. Uh, they're well. Listen, they're probably on pace for well above thirty. John Tortorella. Don't they get, have thirty? Uh, no. the, John Tortorella is the absolute. Op- him and Brad Shaw are like the opposite of the coaching staff of the Eagles. What Brad <laughs> Shaw has done with the the defense. And just getting that up to speed after trading away like three guys and having the main guy you wanted be hurt the whole season, to then take the pieces and just make an absolute unit, and then your power play is horrible all year, and now it's a unit, like an absolute Dude. feared unit. Do you know what is also Basically so awesome? It's a unit. <sighs> is Cutter Gautier decided to quit on the team? Yeah, and we bring in Jamie Drysdale, Jamie? and it's like. No matter what happened with him, we were going to love him because of how Cutter Goatee went. I love Jamie that. Jamie Drysdale that is a way, beast. He's a beast. <laughs> he is an actual is beast. A, Tortorella. He's not just fun to watch. Like, because of the yeah. situation, he's a beast. Tortorella described him as a rover. And it's like, what does that mean? And then you see him play, and he's like around oh, he's the net. And he's like, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the only rover. way to describe him. And like to get his first point on the power play after being like, oh, he's yeah. good on the power play. We'll see how he fits in. He was throwing no luck passes on his first game. Yeah, it's just disgusting. It's like, I <laughs> Travis Konechny uh, is just I love Travis Konechny, and he had Travis a lot Konechny to prove to me. And I another one of those like just Philly athletes. Philly like, he's guys. Built for yeah. Philly. He's the best player on the team, and he's on the bottom of every scrum. Yes. <laughs> he's yeah. just in That's the funny, middle. That's funny. We were just talking about that. I uh, said it seems like he doesn't realize he's the best player. On the team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it makes me feel so good. For some reason, when a guy comes in because someone quit on our team. Yes. <laughs> this makes me so feel so good yes. that we could just like Jamie Giles out just because. Like we got rid of yeah. Alshon and Nelson Aguilar to get AJ and Devontae Smith. I mean, this year not included, but you know what I mean? Like that mm-hmm. that upgrade is kind of what. Well, Alshon was pretty good. He was, yeah. With the Bears. And then yeah. Nelson Aguilar's popping off right now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I th- I will say though I am dreaming, and I mean dreaming, of Citizens Bank Park on a warm summer's oh day. Gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Fans are getting really I mean, tells are going nuts. If I'm being honest, fans are on their feet. If I'm being honest, I'm a giant Flyers fan. Oh my gosh! You know what I just bigger about? Flyers fan than Phillies fan, but there's no atmosphere. And just surroundings that I'd rather be in than going a to the game, game absolutely. Especially because it's like a, I love the feel of an open yes. roof. You can, it's like open mm-hmm. sky. Yes. Oh okay. my goodness. I've always been. Phillies have been my favorite. Like anytime I've gotten the jersey out of the Philly teams, uh-huh. I've had the most of Philly shirts. Yeah. And those have been my. Baseball to play and watch has been my favorite sport. It's such a chill, such yeah. a chill sport. And I cannot wait because we're making it a run this year. Oh my goodness, we're it. gonna sign Ray Jordan Turner's Montgomery, dude. You keep me. saying I said it last year and he didn't, but Trey Turner is gonna is going to rip. I am more excited <laughs> you know, this year. You know, for how, Trey many, Turner. how many <laughs> predictions? <laughs> we gotta start coming up with something new for I the Phillies because we always yeah. say the same thing. Well, no, every time we talk, well, uh, they legit might be good and show it and show how get signed like a week later. It's uh, the next guy. Yamamoto <laughs> might be get. Uh, he got signed a week later. Okay, well now they're gonna trade. And for every him. time we don't act to the same team. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and every time we never believe that it's gonna happen. I know. We just 
want it to happen oh, so man. bad that we keep saying it. I don't like, need a ton to happen. Like a lot of people are like, Tom Brasky has done nothing to make this team better. It's like it's already great. It's so, like, already you don't great. Need to it's do just fun. the fact that you see the Dodgers and other teams that it's like, it makes you feel. Yeah. It right. makes That's you fair. feel like you, mean, you need something. The like, Defergers, not the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, Defergers. <laughs> and uh, and to be honestly, it's like Folgers coffee. Defer, 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's uh, it's funny though. Is um. Literally have no idea what I was gonna say. <laughs> what that was is funny. Funny. that was so that funny. Was I mean, I the, loved it. Yeah, like um, it's literally right now. Like Sixers. I'm gonna I'm, watch. I'm the gonna Sixers. get back into it because yeah. I've been wanting to. I just want to watch basketball again. I just want to care about basketball again. But it's tough. Like like this year really took a toll on my sports like interest because it was Michigan. Yeah. And then like obviously Eagles, Phillies obviously made a really long run again. Yeah. And it's just like I don't know, getting excited for the Flyers. And when, it's like, where do you find time to fit in? When you in think every... about the Sixers and the way that they went down, and we were so hateful of how they went down because of them just not caring, giving up. And then you think of the Eagles and how they went down. It mm. makes you appreciate how the Phillies fought till their game seven. Yeah. And like, yeah, their offense went cold and they looked horrible in that game seven. But like, we made it to game seven of the A or NLCS. Mm-hmm. With, and like with, after missing, after losing the World Series the year before, yeah. exactly, it, it just makes and, you appreciate it. And giving you a ton of moments to just be like, wow, like I know. Yeah. I, think, in, I, I would say that 2022 gives me way more chills than 2023. Yeah, because, because the Cinderella story kind of, is just yeah. like wow. And it's, a, it's the but, first time back. And yeah, them beating the Braves this year felt better. Than them beating then the Braves last, last year. Because last, I year, think last the year, whole dude, Attaboy Harper game was. Dude, that might have dude been it was. Yes. Like, it was exactly how you explained it to me, like when we all predicted it. Yeah. You guys both said the Braves were going to win because the Braves were even better. Yes. Yeah. And it was like the year before, it was like, oh, the Cinderella story. And it was the story. That's why we run. Yeah. yeah. This year, they just lined up and they're like, all right, they, dude, who's they better? They were neck and neck. And the Phillies were like, you know who earned it? Castellanos, I, I, he went cold a little bit, but that Strider home run he hit, like... Oh, the I, one that landed in, like, Atlantic City. I don't think there. it even landed yet. <laughs> it went around the Earth 16 times. It's in <laughs> orbit. A hundred miles in, eight million miles back out. Like, eight... I just... 18, that was amazing. Eighteen thousand miles per hour. Yes, and Harper being Harper. Zach... Wheeler? Oh my gosh. Ranger Ace. Suarez? Absolutely. I will never understand. I will never understand how Bryce Harper got motivated enough by that thing. Like, okay, uh-huh. I, I understand how he got motivated, but then can just go out and just hit two home runs like, like it's nothing. It almost mm-hmm. like it's like he decides. You cannot he's just, just go hit a home run. You cannot just go <laughs> on an MLB so field and know. hit a home run, whatever you want. That's so And true. he hit two. I know. <laughs> and he hit and two. they weren't and they weren't like, just home runs. No, they, they were moonshot. And they weren't just like two shot, games missiles. after he said it. It uh-huh. was the game oh, no. after he said it. And what I can't wait for this year, just to see again, because you know you're gonna see at least fifty of them with like a <laughs> one uh batting average. Shoot. Schwarber hitting home runs is one of the most sad. Like you know how like people get satisfied by like popping bubbles or you know that's what I just get. Just like sat- a short what- of just like saying crush. Oh so yes. Crushed. It was funny as we were talking about like what it reminded us of, uh-huh. and it was like every time he hits one, it's just like he swings, hits it, and then just like I know. Yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. That's definitely exactly. Yeah, it's not that even like a, it's not even admiring it. it as much. He just like looks at it just oh. just enough to let the pitcher oh, know that way, it's gone. It's almost like a wink. It's almost like a. You get out of here. Yeah. You gotta live your life, Paul. Yeah. One exciting thing about the Phillies is that Bryce Harper finally healthy. He hasn't been Full healthy. season. Yeah. First Full base. Season. Yeah. I can't I'm w- more excited about him than Trey Turner. Fair. Even though I'm very Turn that yeah. into MVP wherever you can because Bryce Harper's winning MVP this year. Oh. No, uh, we said we said Turner was. They both no, are. Harper is. Uh, yeah, they're they're going to compete for said. each other. No, Did you Harper's say that Turner winning was winning MVP? I think, yeah. yeah. Harper's winning MVP. I think so. At first base. Jim, stop shaking like a dog. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I please. Sorry. I'm, um, I'm containing Journey back here. Reese Hoskins being God hurts. Is he anywhere? It, He's not, right? Not yet. Oh, yeah. uh, it just, it's just because and it makes it easier that he was out all year last year. So it's like I saw the team without him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It hurts me a lot because my fandom when they were bad was solely being like, 
Well, at least you have Reese Hoskins. Hoskins. Exactly. Yeah. And so and 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 a lot of the electrifying uh goosebumps moments are from Reese Hoskins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In that 2022 playoff run. The Even just that seeing them in the about this bull, offseason like, is like yeah. How are there still this many great players? Out Somebody there? said so, like Josh uh, Hader's out there, Reese Hoskins, Jordan L- Montgomery. Somebody yeah. said you can blame Why? Scott Boris because a lot of them are his clients, and he's driving the price just sky high, so yeah. people aren't willing to sign him. Yeah, screw you, Scott Boris. Yeah, but also bring Boris. all them here so, because Harper's Scott your best Boris. player. Jim, what did hurt worse? Uh, true. This is hard. What hurt worse? This is a segment I thought of. We're going to compare th- four. The worst losses from Philly sports. The, from the Are you going to give us comparisons? What, yes. So there's four, all four teams, their worst moments. Okay. And we're going to compare them. I believe that the Eagles right now is the worst loss. They, well, I mean, we it's can all try lot, to, though. All Eagles losses. Like, are we just reminiscing? Our, oh, I thought our, you were saying the that worst like, we were going to do the Sixers from we're last gonna year compare, compared to the Eagles of this year. Well, kind of because like how about I don't we do really... like all time that we remember? That, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, yeah. so in our lifetime, I yeah. mean right, Eagles so right away. Eagles lost. Eagles, Eagles right away. I mean, the Super Bowl is like the Alshon drop. The Alshon mind. drop yeah. against the Saints has to be the worst that I can remember. Yeah, I think yeah. so. That because was... like even even the Super Bowl like this year was more. Uh, of how just do you like not a, say that? This though. year was just so, more of like a slow death. So yeah, it's like completely. It, it kind of helped out. It wasn't like a shock factor. The, Alshon was just like you were winning. The that game, game was right here and and, and going to the Super right Bowl. There. Yeah, I would have to say the Alshon drop against the Saints for the Eagles. I seeing how this year went, I would say last year's Super Bowl, just because yeah, like, with Jason Kelsey. Yeah, I think it's last win. year's Super Bowl for me. Uh, yeah. But I guess okay. So hurt worse. Maybe it's just because I handled the Super Bowl loss a lot better. Yeah. I like, just to me it felt like the Super Bowl felt like almost like because we had just won one a few years ago. It almost felt like a privilege. Yeah. It, so like exactly. To yeah. me, we lost and we exactly. lost to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. So it's not like we just went up there and lost to Jared Goff. And it's like oh we should have never lost that game and this and that. Yeah, yeah. but to me, Jalen Hurts played a really good game. The whole team played a really good game. And then no, we just lost. because we went. Back in the rebuild after that Super Bowl, after the first Super Bowl, yeah. and it's like we worked our way all the way back up. So I don't feel like it was like a privilege. I agree. From my we view. had some pretty and, bad years. In and between. I don't think it, we lost like it's Patrick Mahomes. Like I don't take it that way. We we could have easily. We had won. the best team in yeah. the NFL. Yeah. yeah. See, that's what I mean. No, I'm like, not trying to justify. It. I'm yeah. I think it it's because they won already. Yeah. So I know. so yeah. at that point, I think the Alshon drop. Really, yeah. really hurt. Yeah, yeah, I did not handle the Alshon drop. Same. Very well. No, yeah. I handled the Super Bowl I loss honestly, pretty decent. Like, to be well, honest, yeah. like it was like more of I a disappointment. I remember the game, but I don't remember the Alshon drop. Like, oh, that it's much. like still literally just can, burned yeah, into I my memory. See it in my, no, I didn't handle the Super Bowl too well either. Yeah. Because of that flat. But it was more flag. just. Yeah. But like yeah. I said, it was just the fact that it was all. That's what like hurts the most. Was Literally the, is because it was a flag yeah, was that we lost. Yeah. It it was it was a flag, but it should not have been called mm-hmm. in that moment. All right, how about Phillies? Uh, we might uh, all agree on this one. Astros when they lost the World Series. I mean, Ooh. it's hard to say because they've been so well, bad for, for you the guys. Rest of our life, you guys have not a, really, but like. 2011. For 11 straight years, they were so bad. Um, Not even close. Yeah, but the issue is that the and the, the reason it hurt worse. Maybe hindsight is because of the time in between, going back and the fact that our pitching staff was absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Cliff Lee, Roy Halladay. Cole the Pat- only oh. reason why I would pick this year over last year. I'm it's picking because this year. I'm picking this year. The diamond packs. No, How I'm picking this year because we were I up. Think we should have won that with series. Like yeah. We were up 2-0, then we were up 3-2. to two. Or no, they, did they bring it back 2-2? Two, 2-2, two? Two, two, then 3-2, two, then 3-3. Yeah. Three, three, we could have ended that so fast. And yeah. then just I'm, that's up. the one I was going to say because, um, like we all say it, uh, you said it to be like earlier in the, in the pod today, that – the 2022 season gives you chills more. Yes. And why is that? I think it's because it was like, no way, mm. no way, no way. All the way up until the very end where it was just like, there's no pop. Like, like, are we really going to win? Yeah. And then they That's didn't why- win, and you were just like, 
how can I be mad at this team? Yeah, exactly. But last year, I think, for me, has to do it because there was so... There was high expectations. You beat the Braves. There was very high also, expectations. Yeah. And the Diamondbacks yeah. were the last wild card, and you yeah. should have. Like, I think you did not year, have high expectations. I think it was like, last year. Well, I said how I was like almost a privilege, and you lost Patrick Mahomes. Yes. Whatever. That's like the the we the should thing. have beaten the Diamondbacks. Completely. I think the, my okay. thing with the Astros yeah. was that you could think ahead. My thing with the Astros is you could think ahead. That like oh this is the beginning, mm-hmm. but it still broke my heart because yeah because in that moment I'm not worrying about a head. Yeah. all I care yeah. about is winning. I agree. That's what I meant. Like the no hitter, I was furious. Yeah, that, like yeah. in the moment because like that catch at the wall yeah. that oh JT hit God. that was Stop. a heartbreaker. Oh my, that literally that, could that, have changed the that, entire series. That is worse than like. For the Alshon job yeah, for you, that's that worse. is worse. I agree. No, completely agree. I would right. compare it like this. Like Actually, the Flyers this year. I it's probably I have, close to the same. <laughs> the Flyers this year, I have no expectations. So, like, they make it to the playoffs. I'll be like, this is way further than I yeah. thought. Next year, however, if they're horrible, I'll be very, very mad and disappointed because you set my expectations with what you yeah. were doing yeah. this year. I don't Completely. think the Phillies was as, as like, oh my gosh, though, as if the Flyers made it this year. No, yeah, the Phillies, you did expect them to make the playoffs. Yes. You didn't expect them to be that good. You though. didn't expect them to make the World Six Series. Six years, though. <laughs> I, oh, because they, immediately Kawhi comes in yeah, my head. But they, like, it has to was, be. But I don't know because that was just like pure shock. Like, what the yeah. heck just happened? Celtics last year was just... Like, literally, like, I can't explain to you that entire game wrecked, like, the okay. rest of my day and week because it was just, like, pure just outrage at how just effortless and careless their team Yeah. Was. Here, Here's how I can take this. So the segment is what hurt worse. I, I would see. say what hurt worse. Like, imagine you were dating a girl that you were just like, she is the best like oh my gosh we're gonna marry have kids and then she breaks up with you immediately yes at the, like at the weirdest time but like it's like co-op. it doesn't really matter like it's just like like yeah. you didn't even understand it's just like i just don't love you anymore that was yeah. the kawaii <laughs> and now uh, and then the, the other one, one is like she cheated on you she treated you terrible at the end and then it was just like all this horrible stuff and then you're just furious left you with so a really bad taste what would you. hurt worse I would say A would hurt worse. So <laughs> I, I would I say the Kawhi shot. The Kawhi shot. The immediate shock than just. But that's a fair comparison. I feel like is, that's yeah. exactly what it was. And I'm, I mean, I feel like dude, it's a shot. there has I mean, never I a been a game. Fan, but. I mean, the Eagles losing the Super Bowl, I did pretty much the same thing. I was just like, you got to be kidding. But <laughs> the Kawhi shot, I literally just well, was just like, Mm-hmm. Really? Like, yeah, I, really? I, like, literally, I guess I should have read that. Like, what hurt worse? So what Kawhi hurt worse? Kawhi hurt worse because we would have made the championship that year. Mm-hmm. But, like, Maybe this year, won. Ben Simmons. This, year, won this, this year, Ben Simmons. Hurt, it was Jimmy more Butler anger because it was just of how they lost Joel it all. And but at the same time, this year, almost hurt worse because the Celtics are a kryptonite. Our kryptonite in all capital mm-hmm. letters. Yeah. And we were... Literally up three two yeah. and had the lead in the fourth quarter mm-hmm. and decided to lose yeah. it. But yeah, that and then Kawhi was just like, seven. like I literally couldn't speak after because it shot. It was just like, what? The you weren't really yeah. mad. It was and just like I, li- I remember. I, I remember vividly. Sadness. I and shut the- off the TV and just started pounding the steps as I walked up and like I remember like hurting my wrist because I was just like <laughs> so uh, mad. And I was just like, like it's what not the like the Sixers fought that they lost that Kawhi game. They did like defense. That's like, what I'm saying. Wasn't, you like, couldn't really be mad. They didn't play. They may have played bad throughout the game or whatever. But that but, like, game was. I, I can't really remember the games. Like, well, if you remember anything before that, if you remember yeah. Jimmy, Butler Jimmy Butler tied it up right, right, at, the right end, at the end with the layup. It was a really, really good game, <clears throat> bro. It's like it was like Villanova against North Carolina when uh, Chris, Jenkins Chris Jenkins hit the did. shot. I remembered his name this time. Yeah. <laughs> like, imagine being a North Carolina fan. When, I know. What, uh, I forget who it was, but came down, literally, like, does, like, a leaning three, drains it, and North Carolina's like, holy crap, we're going to win. This is amazing. And then Chris Jenkins comes that's down like, with the improbable. Uh-huh. That's like, like if um that's, Quentin Johnson gets you the long, deep bomb down the sideline for a touchdown, and then Michigan loses on a fumble at the end of the game. Yeah. 
what, like, what is the point of bringing this? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of her, Jim, what about you? Like, you're you're a. I would say Kawhi. I watched that game. That was one of the. That's why I don't watch Sixers games. <laughs> yeah. um, you are I the curse. I can't imagine Jim, being a hardcore single, Sixers fan. The entire Sixers. That's game the from same. Here that's the same to me as our next the weirdest topic. Thing, well, wait. Can I just say one no, last exactly. thing about the Sixers? The weirdest thing that I. The weirdest thing that I find weird mm-hmm. is that weirdest thing that it seems weird. like no one in Philly cares about the Sixers, but, but like the everyone best team. says that Sixers fans are easily like the most passionate and like hurtful to other players and teams out of all the Philly sports fans. Really? Huh. It's like they said that like NBA Sixers fans are just like flat than... out evil compared to e- even Eagles fans. Right. So this, the Flyers... I mean, this is so an this obvious. Is, this is Hertz worse, though. This is this is obvious. very similar. This is O B D. Agreed. O U S. And I'm probably gonna go with that one. But this is similar to the Kawhi shot, which is just shock, versus the team just getting beat, which is 2012 when they beat against the Penguins, the, they and then the going to the yeah. Devils, and then they won the first game against the Devils in overtime with a Briere goal, and then they just crapped the bed the rest of the way. And I hate the Devils. I hate the Devils. I hate the Devils. So <laughs> I, Jim, let me reiterate: the Devils could I be like hate, one of my favorite teams right now. You you don't understand. <laughs> that is, that's dis- that's that disgusting. Is gross. That's like saying that's you, liking the, uh, that the Commanders. commanders. <laughs> See, <laughs> yes, that's how it is. Yes. It's it's yes. Commanders and Rangers are literally the um, Commanders and Devils. You can, Commanders yeah. and um, Giants are literally the, the uh, Rangers and Devils. Rangers and Devils. The, the, you hate, you absolutely cannot stand, stand the Penguins the or Penguins. Dallas. They are horrible. They're the worst teams in their sports. The Devils? In the rain. The, no, the, wait. The Giants and, rain, and the Rangers yes. are like. They don't, don't really, really affect ca- me. I hate you, but I don't really and the care. Commanders and the Commanders and Devils are just like, almost, for some reason, they just, managed to kill you in the worst times. <laughs> Marty freaking Brodor is my least favorite, but also I understand that he's the best goaltender of all time. Yeah. The Devils are the worst. And you <laughs> liking the Devils makes me so mad. Like, I, I, I they only beat you in the worst times. Because I didn't second, grow up in that Flyers I was just saying, What is yes. your guys' worst uh, for the Flyers? I don't know. You um, haven't really had any, right? Uh, it's no. uh, like uh, Pittsburgh I, a few I years honestly ago was bad. hate the Bruins more than the Penguins. <clears throat> oh, that's that's reasonable. The, 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 the uh, Bruins are the Patriots. Um, Bruins more. Why? It's just because they're yeah. Boston. No, I just mean that they're the Patriots, <laughs> and I just hate them because they're yeah, kind of. Uh, so I and I they had mean, success. Do you despise the Red Sox? Yeah. Uh, not really. Yeah, because like I don't care about As a Flyers fan, I would say that. From my like, well, I hate the Penguins the most mm-hmm. by far. I find it more that like the Bruins would come second, and they're kind of like I would compare them to like the Yankees uh, because they're not in your division, but you still hate the them. Mets. Maybe. Well, the Mets are in a division. Yeah. And then I would think that I would, for me, like I said, I wa- I wasn't really old enough. I was old yeah. enough, but like wasn't into it enough to know those heartbreaking. So like, I'll watch the Rangers and Devils, and like. I don't have I'm not I don't have any rooting interests for them at all, but I don't have any like hatred or whatever. Yeah. Like I'll watch Jack Hughes and I'll just be like, dude, this dude is insane. Yeah. Where like if I were watching the commanders and they had a really good player, I would I would yeah. never admit it. Literally like, they drafted Nico Heesher. I'm like, oh, I guess I have to hate him his whole career. <laughs> they drafted Jack Hughes, don't care, hate you. Not hate personally. Yeah. Well, uh, even I just dislike the team a lot. <laughs> well, even with all of this, there is still some good in the world, and that is that we have a lot of content coming out yes. for you people, and it's exciting. Very exciting. And we We've, hit two and a half thousand views on our latest short. It is. Yeah, we're doing a very lot of much shorts. Thanks to you guys. All yeah. thanks to you guys. Yeah. Um, make sure you guys <laughs> subscribe, um, comment, like, and hit the bell once you subscribe. Because to be notified. Do that release. when we post. It'll let you know that we posted. Correct. We appreciate all the support. The love, the comments, yeah, everything. This was like more of like a downer episode of like the negativity, but it's coming back up yeah. because the Eagles are done, and we're looking forward to the positivity of Philly sports. Yeah. And, and thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. one. That was our best outro of all time. I don't think I've ever ever said it right. Peace. I-